Hey, happy Monday, everybody. Mark again here, Weatherman Plus. Now, we're about to go into an extreme pattern. Even though we got Memorial Day coming up and it's supposed to be warming up, we're about to have an extreme pattern where it's going to bring cold temperatures on the West Coast, cold temperatures also from the center to the East Coast, and a big warm-up in the center of the U.S. Plus, this pattern is messing up our hurricane season, so we do have our next area to watch. I will show you all the information. Make sure you subscribe if you've never been here before. I'm all year along. Make sure you share this video, guys. Let others know what is coming. Now, we're just in the beginning of the pattern, and you can see on your precipitation, HRRR, that we do have some storms moving across Montana today. We also have them for Florida and Georgia and a little bit of southern Alabama this evening have some storms. Plus, we have them for Oklahoma and Texas today, and there is a tornado threat. And for tomorrow, this is going to ramp right back up for Texas and Oklahoma again, and there is a tornado threat for tomorrow as well. But you can also see as the storms come across Montana, it is bringing 50 and 60 miles per hour wind gusts with that all evening long. And you're going to get some 40s and 50s in Texas. But what's coming tomorrow for Texas is going to be stronger. And you start getting some 40s and 50 miles per hour wind gusts pushing all through northern and central Texas all the way to the early morning hours on Wednesday. So your severe weather for today, you do have chances for hail and you have chances for wind as well. You do have a tornado threat. You have a 2% right here for Texas and here's your cities at risk. And you can see this from National Weather Service. Severe thunderstorms are possible across portions of the southern high plains this afternoon and evening. Large hail and damage and gusts will be the primary hazards with these storms. Additional strong to isolated severe thunderstorms are possible across portions of Montana and parts of southern Alabama, Georgia, into Florida. Plus for tomorrow, we do have severe weather as well. You have chances for hail, wind, and tornadoes once again for Texas. And here's the cities at risk for tomorrow, for Tuesday. Plus this pattern we're going into is going to be extreme, guys. It's going to put some people in freezing temperatures. Still might get some frost advisories. And it still might put you in the high 50s, maybe the low 60s for some people's highs. So for the west coast of the U.S., for your EPO, your East Pacific Oscillation, whether you're going to a trough or a ridge, you see you're in a trough that you're going to be going into. This is bringing those cooler temperatures I told you about last time to the northwest. And as you go into the beginning of June, it's going to come back down on the west coast. And this is all models in agreement. You have the euro in the blue, the GFS in the red, and the Canadian in the green. All agreeing we're going into that deep trough on the west coast and this is where our subtropical jet will get involved so remember when you have a negative phase on your epo you start getting that jet stream on the west coast of the u.s you also get that low pressure from a subtropical jet could bring it even lower guys but this will bring some cooler temperatures in on the west coast plus when you look at your nao your north atlantic oscillation let's you know if you're going on high ridge or deep trough on the east coast of the U.S. And you can see that you're getting all these little troughs coming on, these little cold spills that's going to be dipping through, especially from the 25th all the way to the beginning of June. So remember, when you have a negative phase on NAO, that brings your jet stream towards the center to the east coast of the U.S. This brings storms. This also brings some cooler air if we have some, and we do have some. And it also is going to bring a storm that's just going to revolve around for a few days, bringing a lot of flooding as well. So you can see this when you look at your jet stream as you start going into that negative tilt in the northwest, bringing those cooler temperatures that you do have, but this will continue while you get that negative tilt on the NAO. You get a big deep trough on the east coast, you get a deep trough on the west coast with your subtropical jet getting involved, keeping that even deeper as you go towards the end of May. But you can also see on the east coast for a few days, we're going to start having this big trough coming in, and this is going to swirl a system around for a few days, guys. And you can also see this on your vorticity. So as you look, you can see up here in the northwest, you do have them storms from what's circling around in the northwest, also them cooler temperatures. But once we go into that negative phase, once we get that negative phase all the way to the west coast, negative phase all the way to the east coast, you can see how that just revolves around, brings all that precipitation north in the middle. This is bringing heavy precipitation for y'all. And this is going to revolve around for a few days, almost a week. At the same time, as we go in the beginning of June, we do have some favorable environment, guys. And the subtropical jet is going to push everything to the east. And as we go through this period of hurricane season, everything always forms up really close either in the Gulf or right off the coast of the Southeast. That's all the way until June. And we do have some good possibilities that some formation could come out of that. 
Plus, you can see here from Climate Prediction Center, you have a risk of heavy precipitation from the 27th of May all the way to the 2nd of June. Right here in the central of the U.S., a slight risk. That means a 20% chance, but that's 20% chance of heavy precipitation. And you also have a moderate and a slight risk coming from Florida and the southeast from the 27th through the 29th. And this could last until the second, maybe even the third. So you see, as you go through Wednesday, you do get some heavy precipitation for Texas. You're getting some for Florida, for Georgia, even some for Alabama. As you have these storms, you just have a stalled front center, bringing them storms for a few days, bringing heavy rainfall. But once we go into this pattern, it's going to bring the heavy rainfall across the center of the U.S. It's also going to bring more across the southeast. You can see all the heavy precipitation that's coming from the upper Midwest, the central, and northern. And this is all the way from the 29th all the way possibly to the 2nd, bringing precipitation over towards the southeast and the mid-Atlantic. So far, bringing about 2 to 3 inches, and some hot spots could get 4 or 5 inches from this pattern. And you can see it for the southeast as well, for Florida, Alabama, Georgia, the Carolinas, Virginia, even some of Maryland. Y'all get in on this heavy precipitation. Just look at all the heavy rainfall that is staying in Atlantic. That is a lot, but that will be offshore. But look at the coast. The coast is starting to get in towards 5 to 7 inches of heavy rainfall. Plus, when you look at your update from your A or your Arctic Oscillation, you see we have these cold dips of cold pockets coming through all the way to the end of May. And then right in the beginning of June, it's going to start bombing down with some more cold air. So you can see the cooler temperatures is in the northwest for this morning, and it does warm right back up for everybody today all the way into Canada. But with this pattern, that's going to continue coming down the west coast. You might even get some frost advisories. And as you go through Wednesday and Thursday, it's going to start coming through the Great Lakes and the upper Midwest. A little bit of cool air on the northeast as you go through Wednesday. But once you get through Thursday and Friday, then it starts getting more extreme. As you go through Thursday... Could get some frost advisories over here for the intercoastal northeast. This is all freezing temperatures. This is all in the high 20s, low 30s, where everybody else is in the high 40s, maybe the low 40s. For the west coast, also towards the east coast, while this warm-up comes through the center of the U.S. And it does warm all the way up for Wednesday. But this keeps coming down. It comes down again as you go through Friday. It starts bringing the cooler temperatures from the center to the east coast. Cooler temperatures on the West Coast, while you get this pattern in the middle, just bring a lot of very warm temperatures. But now you have this system swirling around. So once you go through Saturday, you have some more cooler temperatures coming through. But this is going to be some daytime highs that we're going to talk about. This is your overnight lows. But once you go through the daytime highs, you can see that cold pocket that sticks around with this system, still keeping y'all in the 40s for your daytime highs. And that is your daytime highs with those temperatures. And it's gonna come down once again as you go through Sunday, come through Monday. It's just gonna stick around. You're gonna have your daytime highs in the 50s on the east coast of the US, big pocket of it. And you're gonna keep getting these cold temperatures coming through the west coast, going further and further south. And this continues for a few days. Then as you go towards the end of May, you can see it sticks around the west coast the longest, but then we started getting all that heat pulling up. This big pattern is going to bring a lot of very warm temperatures to the south, to the southeast, as you go through the 1st and the 2nd of June. And then as you go through the 3rd, it just gets a little more extreme. Very warm temperatures coming to the south and the southeast. It just gets hotter and hotter and hotter. And it is that time of year for it, but that is some very hot temperatures moving through, guys. So be aware of that. And this pattern will affect our hurricane season. So usually in June, you have the Central American Gyre. This is very famous for building low pressure systems. They fling out to the Eastern Pacific. They can fling into the Caribbean. And we get some that come across the Southeast and move away. Maybe even get into the Western side of our Gulf of Mexico. Because of this pattern, we have the subtropical jet pushing everything to the East. Now we still have this disturbance one, 10%, still no big deal guys, it's still moving east, northeast, no threat to anyone. But with this pattern that's setting up, now I'm gonna show you the next area to watch. So you can see here as you go towards the end of May and the beginning of June, that as all this precipitation, heavy rainfall keeps moving through the Central American Gyre into the Eastern Pacific, usually this is where things form in the pattern that we're in. But with all this going on with your weather pattern, it's going to pull all this precipitation to the east, northeast, and we have opportunities of something that could come into our gulf, maybe even to the southeast, and maybe get something spinned up. 
because we still have a possibility of a front end deuce low that's still going to form over the southeast and go over by the east coast, still bringing a lot of thunderstorms with that. But if you watch by the Central American Gyre, you can see as this weather pattern comes to effect, it tries to go into Pacific like it normally does when we have this weather pattern. But this is pulling east northeast, and there's a lot of possibilities of that all that moisture maybe getting a surface low, strengthening up, and moving also east-northeast. Now, this could affect the Western Caribbean, could affect Bahamas, and it could even go further west and be even more of a threat. And you can see this still from the ensembles of what's going on in the beginning of June. You can see all this possibilities of a storm forming up in the Central American Gyre, and it could go right by the Bahamas, it could go by Florida, it can go by the Southeast Coast, and it could still stay somewhere in that region. All these are showing sooner or later, this precipitation could build something and go straight from the Central America, straight across into the Bahamas, maybe even across the Southeast Coast, could be something strong. Even when you look at the control member, it's showing that something could still spin up close to the home as we go through the beginning of June. And that is exactly where things start sparking up. All right, everybody, it's another day where we're going to give one of these away. You've never been here before. This is from Accurite. They've been around for 80 years, a very long time. They're celebrating all year, and so have I. I've been giving one away every other day. It's been about six months now. We've given away almost 90 of them, costing almost $13,000. But I'm one that believes, that, hey, it's not all about money. It's all about giving back. That's why I've been doing it. I love you guys. Y'all are very great. So I'm going to keep doing this all of this year. I'm going to try and keep doing this all this year. As you can imagine, it gets pretty expensive. But it does connect to the National Weather Service, whether on the ground, it goes to a fence or a pole. It installs very easily, as long as you keep it level. And all you got to do is put the comment weatherman in the comments below. You must be a subscriber to be eligible for this and hit the like button. I will call out the winner in tomorrow's video. But thank you so much for your time. God bless you and your family. That's most important to me. I know everyone is very <laughs> busy at this time right now. School's almost out. Summer coming in. Hurricane season ramping up things are changing so i appreciate every single one of y'all now i want to talk to you today about romans 5 1 through 8. therefore being justified by faith we have peace with god through our lord jesus christ by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of god and not only so but we glory in tribulations also knowing that tribulation worketh patience, and patience experience, and experience hope. And hope maketh not a shame, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us, for whom we were yet without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet peradventure for a good man some would even dare to die. But God commandeth his love toward us, in that, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Amen. Have a great Monday out there, everyone. I appreciate you for tuning in today, and I will keep you updated on this upcoming pattern and what could happen with this next potential tropical wave. Hope you have a very blessed day today, and remember all glory always goes to God, our Father in heaven, Yahweh. And I pray he always keeps you safe, of course, you and your family, now and forever, <laughs> until the day he comes to bring us home. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen to that. Have a great day, everyone.